November the 20th is Black Consciousness Day in Brazil, a public holiday in many cities and states around the country. Although portrayed to the outside world as some sort of racial paradise, Brazil is nothing of the sort. It was the last country of the West to abolish slavery, and when it did so, in 1888, the establishment gave the freed slaves no means for survival or economic integration, creating a huge destitute underclass, the lasting effects of which we can still see today. One arena where racism is still apparent today is football, Brazil's national sport and so often a reflection of society as a whole. Despite the majority of players being non-white, they are often treated in stereotypes, while the white players of European origin are strong-willed leaders, black players are seen as tricky, inventive, but ultimately unintelligent and untrustworthy. That is not to mention the many cases of on-field racial abuse which we have witnessed over the years. My name's Ewan Marshall, staff writer at The Brazilian Report, standing in for Editor-in-Chief Gustavo Ribeiro, and this is Explaining Brazil. To discuss racism in Brazilian football, joining me today is Marcel Diego Tonini, PhD in Social History at the University of São Paulo and editor of Ludopédio, an online portal of academic works about Brazilian football. Hi Marcel, thanks for speaking to us today. It's a pleasure to me. So, to start things off, let's go back in time to the foundations of Brazilian football. So it started as a sport for white men played by white men. But when we look at the history of Brazil's most prominent and famous footballers, the vast majority of them are black. How did this sport begin to accept black players and how has racism in football evolved over these years? Right. Um, uh, football came by the influence of the physical education, the hygiene of the bodies, uh, seen as a European modernity, a leisure, and above all, a practice of social distinction. The material itself was imported and the terms said in English in Brazil in the first decades of the 20th century. Mm-hmm. In the deficiency of the elite, its popularization was inevitable. Uh, the control of the official practice uh, of the clubs and the leagues remained in the hands of the elites. Uh, the discrimination took place by means of regulations prohibiting the entry of athletes who were manual workers, illiterate, poor and colored people. It was also forbidden the presence of blacks in the bleachers of private stadiums. Mm. Uh, the elite charged high membership fees. They uh, demanded that the athletes be members of this, the clubs or that the affiliated clubs had the stadiums. For instance, we, we have the Vasco da Gama in 1927. In the state capitals of Brazil, clubs of popular origin, for the most part, played uh, championships of lower divisions or had to found their own leagues. We have two examples. The National Football League Porto Alegrense in 1910 and the Suburban Football League in Rio de Janeiro in 1907. The Hasselist theories of the end of the 19th century also influenced the football. The black presence was indesirable Racism was interjected by the black athletes themselves who tried to disguise their own negritude, skin color and hair, especially. Throughout high powder, talcum powder, passing a type of gel, uh, smoothing hair and wearing a cap. The preeminent performance of the blacks was uh, overturning the restrictions in a few in a few decades. Some authors have used the term conservative democratization to explain how some clubs have opened their doors and and to restrict certain venues to members 
who have monopolized uh, political and financial uh, management and open the other spaces to athletes and fans that uh, that were members from the lower classes as the the black people Grêmio uh, is one of those clubs that practices uh, such acts in Brazil and so today how has this racism in football how has it evolved over the years does it does it still exist is is football in Brazil still racist and how does it manifest itself Yes, the, the football in Brazil is still racist until now. Uh, if we can see more uh, black athletes, but we can't see uh, blacks occupying uh, other spaces, like uh, managers, like uh, coaches, other spaces that needs from them opportunity and uh, knowledge. So, Marcel, would you say that the structure of Brazilian football is inherently racist? And if so, why is it? Uh, it's certainly racist. The uh, recruiting base for our coaches in road football, but above all in Brazil, it is the universe of former players. The proportion of blacks in one and another universe is not repeated in Brazil. Why on on one side we have many black athletes, on the other hand we counted on the fingers of one hand that the black coaches in the two main divisions of Brazilian football. The truth is that the blacks are discredited to invest in the in their career since young people. They do not see themselves in this in these positions. To be a good coach, you need uh, the ability to coordinate a work team, they stand up to the players, make themselves respected in front of the leaders, disdain any fan fights, relate well to the press, and be a good strategist as well. The indispensable disposition, however, is to rule other men in a contest where male values are dramatized. The fact that blacks out of the coaching rule is that uh, is considered proper to those nature oriented to sending others. For the status quo in Brazil, in the Brazilian society, uh, it is uh, up to them to obey. There is therefore a direct uh, relationship with the history of Brazil, our slave, slave past. It's not allowed that blacks send whites in any professional and even in football. The, the few that become coach begin in grassroots, from the basic categories until the, they are able to be a, a coach in a crisis of the Brazilian clubs. I interviewed four of them. Three of them told me that either they were fired or they were not hired because they, are, they were black. So, uh, two, two black coaches were Andrade and Jaime de Almeida, both of the most popular club in Brazil, Flamengo. They were uh, respectively champions of Brazilian championship, and even then they were dismissed in the first moment of instability. So, it, their, their lack of preparation and competence or lack of opportunities to them. No, it's no doubt that it's the lack of opportunity because they were not hired by any other great team uh, in Brazil. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned Andrade there because I, I remember that the 2009 championship when he took over the team and they went on to win the league and now we're less than we're less than 10 years later and if i if i'm right in saying i think andragi is either he has now stopped football managing altogether or he is managing like a part-time team in the northeast of brazil or something like that it's amazing the contrast between the way that andragi's career has gone and so many other brazilian football managers who just keep getting chance after chance after chance at the really big clubs. And Andrade, yeah, okay. yeah, one of the only prominent black coaches at the time, has really, he's never gotten a big job since. 
Yes, that that is. Uh, Andrade has no opportunities to uh, keep their career, keep his career, and other white uh, coaches continue their career even with no famous or uh, no no titles. Yeah, there there is there is somewhat of a revolving door of. Uh, white Brazilian coaches who all seem to manage all the same clubs and they all just get passed around. It's quite it's quite fascinating. But yeah, mm-hmm. and another the- thing I would like to ask you was about the international perception of racism in football. Because we see, here in Brazil, we see a lot of reports of racist incidents happening in major European leagues, uh, a lot of black players being um, being abused in Italy and Spain and all of these places, and there is the kind of there's the perception that maybe that doesn't happen in Brazil. Like, what what would you say to that? Well, I, I say that this is a false image that Brazil has helped to to sell around the world for decades. This is the result of the ideology of racial democracy proposed by the intellectual Gilberto Freire in the uh, 1930s. In the 50s, UNESCO came to realize a vast research project whose purpose was to show the world how Brazil was a model of race relations, where blacks and whites coexist harmoniously. Unlike the experience of the United States, of America and South Africa. In a short time, it was verified how this racial democracy was a myth. And now the racism in Brazil uh, occurred in different ways, uh, being black a vic- victim as much as in, in the countries already I mentioned. In football, it, it's no different. Although we have many internationally preeminent black athletes, even Brazilians, uh, they continue to be victims of racism, whether uh, as athletes or in attempt to en- enter other areas of action within football, such as coaches, referees, and uh, sporting directors or journalists, as I, I said. Yeah, and so talking about that, which you just mentioned, about the fact that there aren't many black coaches, while there are many black players... If we just look over to the the north of the Panama Canal for a second, in the United States, in the American football, they suffered from a very similar problem where black coaches were being poorly represented in the National Football League and there they created the so-called Rooney Rule, which was they forced clubs to interview ethnic minority candidates for all of their coaching vacancies. So, do you think that that would be something which maybe could work in Brazil? Yes, but the federations and the state federations and the CPF, they just make uh, protocol campaigns that they want to uh, give an answer to society. So, they, they use banners with uh, say no to racism or uh, racism no... Uh, they don't want to tackle racism here. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly we've certainly seen that quite a lot throughout the years. Although there was one situation back in 2014 when Santos goalkeeper Aranha was racially, abu- racially abused by fans of Grêmio, which we mentioned earlier, uh, during a cup match. And Gremio were eventually actually thrown out of the tournament because of this. And when Aranha returned to Porto Alegre, the first game that he played in Gremio after the situation, after the incident, one of the Gremio club officials called it a quote fair retaliation that he was booed by the Gremio fans. So you know what what does that tell us about? We talked about the confederation, the CBF. But what does that tell us about how the clubs are trying to deal with the issue of racism? Is there any desire anywhere for anyone to do anything about this? In this case uh, reveals that racism is not fought by anyone, neither by CBF ne- nor by uh, Brazilian clubs or federations, state federations. In fact, it shows how society sees the bl- black people and the persons who seek 
who seek his rights as uh, dangerous people, as uh, uh, rebellious people, blacks, and the country never assumes uh, racist, although this is a current, uh, current practice here. And the federations, as I said, they don't want to tackle racism, you know? Yeah, and so an another thing which I've witnessed quite a lot when we're talking about racism in Brazilian football is that when players or people close to Brazilian football, when they are asked about racist behaviour that they have seen or that they have suffered on the pitch, they often reply that to them it's just uh, like a part of the game. It's something normal, it's a strategy from the players and the fans to try and, try and wind up their opponents. Do you think there is anything to that? I mean, should we treat racism on the pitch in a competitive sense? Should we tr should we treat it differently, or is it racism all the same? The, the soccer culture in Brazil, especially, uh, is that we in this space time of the stadium and uh, 90 minutes, it seems to have its own loss, different from Brazilian society, in which uh, discriminatory acts are allowed or at least uh, to tolerated. That is, uh, that what is expressed in sentences such as everything that happens inside the pitch must remain in the pitch, or uh, football has its own rules, or uh, within the four lines uh, this is allowed. Uh, this is a, a soccer culture, you know, and in the, it is very difficult to to tackle this. We have to educate again the society to be not patient with uh, racism, not only in the football, but in the society. Okay, great. So we'll leave it there for today. Marcel, thank you very much for joining us and we hope to speak to you again soon. Okay, it's, it's a pleasure to me. If you like this podcast, please take a look at our website. It's brazilian.report. Every day we have new content about Brazilian politics, finance and society. And we've also got exclusive newsletter services if you want to be briefed about what's going on in Brazil before starting your day. Subscribe now for a free trial and enjoy all of our content for 14 days. And it's really free. You don't have to submit any credit card information whatsoever. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Our handle is at brazilianreport. And that's all for now. I'll see you next week. Thank you.